Welcome back today to Data with Zach's. We were talking about why you should pick data engineering because I'm sure some of y'all are, isn't AI hotter? Why should I be a data engineer if I can just be an AI engineer and that's a hotter place to be? In this video, I'm gonna hopefully dispel a little bit of the hype around AI engineering as well as get you a little bit more excited about data engineering in particular. At the end of the day, like, let's just get it right into it. One is what is AI? Right, AI is patterns learned from data. That's what it is. LLM, ChatGPT, they processed a ton of data and that data was then looked at by giant statistical models. And then that produces what the most probable next word is. That is what an LLM is at the end of the day. An LLM without high quality data is just crazy. It's just going to say all sorts of random stuff. It's going to say all sorts of things that are incorrect or not factual. And it's interesting because you look at companies, OpenAI, where they spend tens of billions of dollars to ingest data from the internet. And OpenAI still has factually incorrect information. It hallucinates all of the time, right? At the end of the day, without high quality data, AI and LLM is just going to keep giving us more and more frustration. It'll keep getting things wrong. How do you produce high quality data? Well, that's where data engineering comes into the place, right? Data engineering at the end of the day is you take data and then you process it and then you give it to an analyst who then visualizes it and finds patterns in it. That's the data engineering from the lab. 10 years, but data engineering is going to shift to be where the consumer of the data that the data engineer creates is no longer an analyst, but it is now an AI. If we can create high quality data to feed to an AI, that is a very, very powerful place to be because of the fact that so many companies have private data that they don't want to share, right? And there's always going to be a need for somebody to be at a company to link up their private data with an AI, which depending on the security and privacy of your company, that might be an AI that is local, Llama or Mistral or one of those open source or DeepSeek, it's a locally hosted model because you don't wanna share all of your company's secrets with OpenAI. Or if your company is a little bit more lax, then you just ship it to OpenAI because it's simpler because you don't have to host your models. But that is a very powerful way that data engineering is going to stick around for a very long time. It's not a role that's going away at all, right? A data engineer is someone who processes data and has a data analyst look at it. Those roles are going to get smaller and less pronounced. Whereas the data engineers that feed data into an AI, those roles are gonna get bigger. And there's data that shows this. The number of data engineering roles over the next five years is expected to double. We're gonna go from half a million to over a million data engineers over the next you know, couple of years, which is gonna be amazing. That's gonna be so many new jobs and new opportunities available for people. And these are high paying, high impact roles that you can use to really help things. Because at the end of the day, companies really need people that enable them with truth. Because data at the end of the day is truth truth, but you have to process it to make it become truth and to make it become actionable. And so that's another very powerful thing that data engineers do, right? Is they take the logs, they take the information and allow it to become business truth to make better business decisions. And that's a very, very, really real thing. Another very important thing to be thinking about here is they say the estimates of the amount of data in the world right now is 180 zettabytes. And some of y'all are probably like, what is a zettabyte? A zettabyte is a billion terabytes. That's 180 billion terabytes of data in the world. That's how much data is generated every year. And the amount of data that we actually store is eight zettabytes. You see how we go 180 zettabytes and then we only store eight. It's a big difference, right? We are, we're, well, we're storing a couple percent. One of the big reasons for that is a lot of the data that we're storing is, you know, long video data, a lot of images. You know, how many of you have 5,000 images of your dog on your freaking phone? That data is harder to process because it's more binary data. It's more image oriented. It's not numbers. It's not rows and columns. It's not structured. It's unstructured data, which is a lot harder to harvest value out. But that's where things are changing, right? Is because AI is giving us the ability to actually extract information in an automated way out of this unstructured data. In the future, as we are being able to get more visibility into this unstructured world, we're going to need to store more data. They say by 2030 that we needed at least triple our capacity, going from eight zettabytes to 25 zettabytes. 25 billion terabytes of data needs to be stored in data centers around the world. If we need to triple the amount of data that we're storing and we're processing so much more, 
who is going to be the best equipped to do that data engineers again that's going to be another very important thing especially data engineers who have cloud experience and if you're interested in more cloud experience i highly recommend checking out my subscription product there'll be a, a link in the description below with a discount that's where we teach all sorts of great cloud stuff what are some other interesting points to be thinking about to be a data engineer right is you sit in the middle one of the things that's this is another really amazing point to be thinking about as you grow in your career is you sit in the middle of the whole technical stack, right? Because on one end of the stack, you have data analyst. And then on the other end of the stack, you have a software engineer or even a hardware engineer, depending on your company. The technical stack goes, it's a very long one. And the data engineer sits right in the middle. If you learn data engineering, you can shift. Like if you get bored, you can go and be a software engineer, or you can go and be a data scientist. You don't have to learn that many more skills to move around. And that's something that I personally did in my career all the time, right? I started my career as a data engineer at Teradata, and then I was a software engineer, and then I went to a data engineer at Facebook, and then I was a software engineer at Netflix, and then I was a data engineer at Airbnb, because I had ADHD. I can only do the same thing for a certain amount of time before I get bored. So that's another very powerful thing about it, right, is that you get flexibility and you can grow in your career, especially being in the middle spot in the whole technical career space. That's going to be really, really amazing. I would say another big thing to be thinking about in this space is if you're interested in remote roles, data engineering is more likely to be a remote role than other ones because of the fact that it doesn't require as much in-person collaboration. In that way, you know, when I worked at Airbnb, my role was completely remote. I never had to go into the office ever. I went into the office one time the whole time I was a data engineer at Airbnb. And that was amazing because they have a work from anywhere policy. And more and more companies are going to do that, especially for data people, because it's just super flexible. So definitely last, but certainly not least, is the compensation is really, really good in data engineering, right? Especially compared to data science, because of the fact that data engineers and data scientists, they make about the same amount of money. But the difference is data scientists have to have a master's degree, whereas you don't have to have a master's degree to be a data engineer. You just don't. It's kind of crazy that data scientists go to school for two more years to make the same amount of money as data engineers. It's a hack to be a data engineer in that way, right? You know, the average salary in the United States is $120,000 a year. And the scale is very, very large, right? So if you get into some of these big tech roles, the amount of compensation that you can make very, very, very high, right? For me, when I was a junior data engineer at Facebook, I made 180,000. And then when I was a staff data engineer at Airbnb, I made $600,000 a year. And $600,000 a year, that's how much a surgeon makes if you're a doctor and you studied for you know so many years to become a doctor. And so there are opportunities in this field to make vast amounts of money. And why is that? What is possible in data engineering to make $600,000 a year? But it comes down to data. If they have the right truth and the right information, that enables companies to make much smarter decisions and especially automated smarter decisions. And if they do that, that will tweak their business in such a way that will enable them to make dramatically more money. For example, at Airbnb, I helped them understand availability better and it allowed them to tweak their definitions and make 3% more money, right? And that was just from my changes. My changes enabled Airbnb to make 3% more money. 3% of all of Airbnb's business is a massive change. And so that is something that you can do and enable as a data knowledge worker. And so at the end of the day, let's recap all of these things. Number one, data is the lifeblood of AI. AI engineering is nice, but data engineering is definitely not going away because it's fundamental to AI, right? Um, number two is you sit in the middle of the stack, right? You can grow wherever you want. You could be a data engineer and then become an AI engineer and you'd be a better AI engineer because you have better skills. Uh, another one is around flexibility, right? You're more likely to get a remote role if that's what you're interested in. And, you know, uh, definitely last but not least, you know, the money. So I'm really excited for y'all to check out the rest of this data engineering bootcamp, this beginner bootcamp. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Definitely check it out. I'm really excited for you guys to join.